warm greetings to all. My presentation is about a research paper discussion and critique entitled An Approach for Predicting the Compressive Strength of Cement-Based Materials Exposed to Sulfate Attack. On the left side tab are the outline contents of my presentation. I already shown the research paper title, so we move on to the research paper premise. It says here the importance of structural material being used in civil engineering, concrete being specified. This strength is assessed especially in areas with the presence of sulfate ions. This factor contributes to the quality of concrete, meaning this leads to deterioration. Well, currently, we have advancement of engineering materials like proposing alternatives and optimizing concrete mixtures. But in this paper, we are to discuss an approach on predicting concrete strength, especially if it's during search. Assessing the deterioration of concrete through this method will surely help us give an idea about the time for concrete quality and performance maintenance. A scrollable spreadsheet for related works with respect to author and research keywords are presented below. We have the different parameters, concrete experiment and performance, the machine learning technique SBM ANN, which means fourth vector machine and artificial neural networks, respectively. To view this in full screen, I'll be posting the spreadsheet link, or you can click the button for the ease of access to the master signed in via Google account. Performance of SBM and ANN model were compared in predicting the strength of mortars which were exposed to sulfate attack. There were a total of 638 data samples. It says here, the values of the coefficient of determination, the mean, the mean absolute error, the mean absolute percentage error, and the root mean square error were used for evaluating the predictive accuracy, as well as sensitivity analysis, which was used to obtain the main factors. Highlighting the phrase, there is no effective method to predict compressive strength of cement-based materials, is specifically in harsh environments. We have discussed here two methods, traditional mathematics, statistical forecasting, and nonlinear prediction methods, which can be used in predicting the values, but for concrete exposed to sulfate attack, it was an exception. Regression models were not suitable, stating as the number of input factor increases, the relationship between the input factors and the compressive strength becomes highly nonlinear and complex. That is why more attention has been paid based on artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. The artificial neural network was one of the options, but due to its intrinsic disadvantages, researchers overcome these limitations to explore the potential of support vector machines. The general objective of the research is to study an approach for predicting the compressive strength of cement-based materials exposed to sulfate attack. To specify the goals, here are the breakdown lists. As mentioned earlier, monitoring concrete strength during service can give an idea about the time for concrete quality control and performance maintenance. It can be helpful in assessing the deterioration of concrete structures and increasing their safety. Conducting the research starts with establishing our baseline for preparing the experimental program. 638 sample data were gathered, 550 were used for model training, and 88 for model testing. The training data set is the general term for the samples used to create the model, while the test or validation dataset is used to quality performance. Perhaps traditionally, the dataset used to evaluate the final model performance is called the test set. Specimen preparation are stated as follows with the table shown prior to mixing proportions of Mortar types with respect to 0 0.35, 0 0.50, and 0.28 water to cement ratio. Accelerated deterioration test was conducted after curing for 90 days. A dry wet circulation method was also adopted. 
Then, unit-actual compression test was carried out in measuring the compressive strength with a capacity of 300 kN through material testing simulation. Shown here is a spreadsheet of the rough experimental data set of 638 samples. Now for the approach on predicting compressive strength, we have two options, SBM and ANN. This will help us mapping data samples with highly nonlinear relationships in low-dimension space where data samples are classified as per principle of risk structure optimization. The calculation process on deriving SDM results starts on determining the training dataset, followed by choosing the appropriate kernel function, solving the optimization problem, optimizing the parameter, calculating the threshold value, then constructing the decision function. Note that MATLAB software was used in implementing the SVM model. For the performance evaluation method of predicting the compressive strength, we have the following mathematical criteria such as R square, MAE, MATE, and RNSC. Joining the group is also sensitivity analysis, which assess the changes in the output caused by the input changes. For initial observation, as per data samples, Exposure time, water to sediment ratio, and sulfate concentration were found to be sensitive to the predicted compressive strength. Within these factors, the exposure time was the most sensitive factor that affects the predicted compressive strength. Comparing SDM approach to ANN or artificial neural network, ANN composed of Many artificial neurons, which are linked together by a network of weights and biases, carrying the output of one neuron as input to another neuron. This usually consisted of inputs, weights, some function, activation function, and outputs. To adjust connection weights and bias values, BT algorithm or backpropagation was used. This is known and widely used for training ANN model. Shown here is a multi-layer schematic which begins with inputting training factors followed by calculating the output by hidden nodes and output nodes then comparing the outputs, figuring out differences, adjusting the model parameters on the basis of training rule until the error is suitably small. Results appear for compressive strength after deterioration. Note, mortars exposed to sulfate attack, values of all specimens generally increased in the early stages, probably because sulfate ions diffuse slowly into specimens. Figure also show that the greater water to sediment ratio, the larger the distant rates of compressive strength. This is caused by the different sulfate resistances of specimens with different microphose characteristics and porosity values. Moving to SVM performance, shown here is the graph of separate result for training dataset and the testing dataset. It can be seen that most predicted points are close to the experimental values. Another graph also show that training data and testing data fitted well with experimental values. Comparing this to the graph result for ANN model, it does also have the potential, but to clearly state which method is more predicting, we derive the results through this mathematical criteria. Calculation shows that R square of training data and testing data were 0 0.9982 and 0 0.9975 respectively for ANN model while SBM was 0 0.9994 and 0 0.9991. The MAE were all less than 3.1 megapascal, the MAPE were all less than 3.8% and the RMSE of training data and testing data were less than 3.6 megapascal. Results indicate that the SVM model has a good performance in predicting compressive strength of mortars exposed to sulfate attack. SVM model was further verified by testing it using the experimental data of the compressive strength of cement-based materials deteriorated in sulfate and seawater.
Results show that the predicted compressive strength of concrete from the SGM model match well with the experimental values, while the predicted compressive strengths of mortars from the SGM model match much better with experimental values of the accelerated degradation. The performance of this predicted compressive strength is different. Um, the reason is that size exposure time, water cement ratio, and sulfate ions, the predicted compressive strength of concrete, uh, 5 newton would also be affected by aggregate content and magnesium ions content. Throughout the study, researchers have concluded that the compressive strength values of all materials is increased and then decreased gradually when the specimens were degraded by sodium sulfate solutions. After degraded by the same concentration of solution, the greater water to cement ratios, the larger descent rate of compressive strength. Sensitivity analysis results show that the main factors influencing the prediction of water compressive strength were exposure time, water to cement ratio, and sulfate concentration. And lastly, Compared to the ANN model, the performance of SDM model is better since predicted compressive strength match well with the experimental value. For further discussion and summary of the study, included here is the critic of the research paper. We have here the summary reiterating the deterioration of concrete structures due to sulfate attack and the methods that will help us predict the compressive strength. Discussed here are the two categories PMSM and NOPM, but this has the potential for predicting strength when exposed to harsh environments. Therefore, this leads to the use of artificial intelligence ANN. However, study also shows that ANN have limits, so research proceeds to investigating another way using SBM. Then results show favorable values that its prediction potential match well with experimental. Two things about the paper, although numerous techniques for predicting concrete strength has been introduced, the researchers explain such methods instill limitations for specific parameters. As mentioned earlier, these were TMSM and NLPN. The study revolves on SVM comparing its effectivity versus ANN. Aside this, research also stated that the relationship among water cement ratio, sulfate concentration, sensitivity analysis, exposure time, and other relevant parameters. In addition, the tables and graphs were well presented as well as the equation, the deviations, and methodology. For major comments, data properties for test samples were given showing the compressive strength result as prediction basis at 90th day prior to querying. Although the 90th day is already favorable, 28th day and 56th day must still be indicated as well with the graph. Since this is published online, it does not follow standard journal format. Colored points for hyperlinks were inappropriately used. Before ending this short presentation, maybe for future conduct of research, probable other machine learning techniques may also be considered or introduced such as the following. Thank you for listening.